I'm rather expectant for what's about to happen this morning. Uh, there's, there's something, there's something in the atmosphere which, which I know. If if I feel that, I know that the Lord, the Lord is about to do something big today in people's lives. So uh, I hope that the, 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 the worship as well that it stirs something within you that the Lord is about to do something this morning. And we're going to do things a little bit different this morning. We're going to start off with communion, uh, just because we want to, to bring this whole s s the service to God this morning. It's all about Him. So, you can take your Bibles and we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 10. And I'm going to read from verse 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16 and 17. And it says there, verse 16, it says, The cup of the, the blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. And I'm just going to read again verse 16. And we can, we can leave the, uh, um, that one on the screen. Where it says, the cup of the blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? When we talk about a communion, we talk about, in this sense here, the, the Greek word for communion here means to share, to have a communion. So in essence it's to, to partake, it's not to just receive, it's to partake. And it says, the cup of the blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, so which we bless, the, 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 the wine or the the juice which we bless, which we bless. So we do something. We partake in the body of Christ. We partake of a communion with Him and with the believers. The bread which we break, which we break. Someone broke the bread this morning. Physically as well. We, we partake in communion. We partake with fellow believers. We partake in what God is doing in our lives as believers. And to, to, to partake, to share in, in communion is to finish, uh, not to finish, to celebrate the finished work of, of Jesus on the cross. So it means that we really understand it and now we celebrate what He did by partaking in it. And it means that when we partake in it, it's not something we do once a month in church, but it's something that it shows in our lives. Our daily lives tell us that every day we are partaking in communion with Christ. It is not a once a month thing, it's an everyday thing, it's a, a lifestyle thing. Our lifestyles tell us how much we partake and celebrate the finished work of, of Jesus on the cross. And when we have communion, we also declare with our lives and with our mouths what the blood of the Lamb accomplished for us. Amen? And I'd like the team to come forward to get ready for the communion. And, um, and then I'll pray. Actually, um, you guys can, 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 can begin to hand out the communion. Thank you.
when Jesus was with his disciples, he took the wine and the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And with this scripture that the Lord wants to tell us that as often as we take it, not whenever we take it, but as often. So it's up to us to make often happen. You can take it every day, every week, but take it often and remember what Christ did for us on the cross. Amen. Let's, let's receive the, the communion together and then I'll pray for us. Thank 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bring us now your blessings as we partake in your communion and as we remember what you did for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Father. Amen. Guys, so this morning, I just want to find myself here. This morning, I've got a word that really the Lord has placed on my heart before the outreach, but particularly during the outreach. When the team were in the Vundu about two, three weeks ago, when was this now? I was praying, and as part of the intercession team, we were praying and we were seeking the Lord for what is it that He wants to do in this outreach particularly. We know that we are going to preach the gospel. We know that we're going to hand out Bibles. We know that, you know, we're handing out clothing and all those things, and God's going to do incredible things. But I wanted to know, Lord, in the spirit realm, what are you busy with? And I literally saw this picture in my spirit, in my heart, I saw bags and bags of seeds being tossed into the ground, not even carefully sown, like tossed into the ground. And I said, Lord, what does that mean? I know the kingdom is in seed form, and you know, we sow seeds, the parable of the sower, but the Lord led me to the parable of the kingdom that speaks about the mustard seed. And we're going to talk about that this morning. And the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. I should have gotten one to just show us, but then if it's so small, you won't see it. So, and it talks about the smallness of the beginning of this. And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, it may look small. Because on this day that we were praying was also a day where very little people came out. As the team testified to a few Sundays ago. And the Lord said, do not be discouraged about what you perceive in the natural. Because how the, spirit, how the spiritual realm works, the kingdom of God, is that it may start small, but it multiplies. It grows. And it eventually permeates. In other words, there's a fancy word in English for infiltrier. Every single area where the seed was sown. And I was fascinated by this. I even sent the team the scripture and I said, look, I'm praying this. And the Lord reminded me because sometimes when the Lord, who knows, when he shares something with you, it stays with you. You think about it, you dream about it, you talk about it, you read about it. This idea of this kingdom that starts super tiny and expands is something I can't get rid of. And I'm like, Lord, okay, there's something more that the Lord wants to talk to us about here. And I remembered... As I was preparing this week, something that changed my life, something that changed my life, my Christian walk with the Lord in a profound, profound way. And it was when Johannes and I moved to a new church, the Lord led us. I was involved at my previous church for eight, nine years. I was planted, like deeply rooted there. I needed a burning bush moment to get me away from my church. And the Lord spoke to me for a whole year before I moved. And he spoke to me and we went to this church and I learned something that I'd never learned before, that I'd never knew before. And this pastor taught us, it was JC. JC taught us that we are carriers of the kingdom. And maybe I had heard it before, but it hadn't dropped in my spirit. I hadn't understood it the way that I started understanding and the way that I started to experience that I am a carrier of the kingdom. If the Holy Spirit is inside of me, and there's a scripture that says, greater is he that is in the world, uh, greater is he that is inside of me than him that is in the world. Please not to get that wrong. <laughs> so if I carry the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that means I'm a carrier of the kingdom. And we started learning that wherever I go, wherever I walk, I can release that kingdom. Are you with me this morning? I don't just have to pray, oh Lord, let your kingdom come over there. No, no, no. If I'm a carrier of the kingdom, that means I can release the kingdom. In other words, the Holy Spirit in me, it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit in me, 
and he wants to use me to infiltrate society and influence it for his kingdom. Does that make sense this morning? And so there is something profound about this, and as I was preparing, I remembered that it's Pentecost Sunday today. I didn't realize when we did the sermon roster, we plan a month in advance, and Johannes decides who brings the word where, and I didn't realize today was Pentecost Sunday. Did you know that it's Pentecost Sunday? What is Pentecost Sunday? I'm going to take us a little bit back into the Old Testament, if that is okay. Okay, Johannes loves it. So we're going to go, and we're going to take a little bit of background, but what is the point that I want to make this morning? And I'm going to repeat this point for the duration of this morning, because I feel strongly in my heart that God wants to equip us as a church to take His kingdom everywhere that we go. Amen? Do we want to just talk about it, or do we want to live it? Who wants to live it? If you don't, we're going to pray for you. I'm serious. We, this is our vision to establish a kingdom community. Well, how and how does the Lord want to do that? He wants us. Can God do anything that He wants to do? Is He sovereign? Yes. But who does He want to use? Visa aan suka. Visa aan suka om te gaan handel om iemand om te gaan ben. Om te gaan release healing in Jesus' name. He wants us. And the question is, are we going to be open for that? Do we want to be used by the Lord? Do we want to see His kingdom established? Because then we want to be hungry for it. Then we need to pursue it with all that we have. We can't just stay in the same comfortable place forever, amen? And I'm preaching to myself this morning. So, okay, if you've got your Bibles, you can, if you've got your phones, you can also turn to version. All the notes are in there. And we're going to go to the book of Leviticus. I know, don't fear, we're just going to do two verses. The book of Leviticus scares some people. Let me just deviate for one moment. Who is going to do word school? Word school is not starting tomorrow night, by the way. Did everyone get the message? It's starting next week, the 13th of June, because they are still busy with the book of Leviticus. If you wanted to join in on the last three chapters of Leviticus, you are so welcome. <laughs> but they had load shedding in Cape Town, and so that's why they couldn't get through the whole book. So praise the Lord. They're starting with the book of John, so we're only starting on the 13th of June. And if you haven't joined Word School yet and you still want to, please just send us a WhatsApp and we will add you on the group. There is still time. All right, so Leviticus 23 is where we're going to read from. And we're going to read from verse, verses 15 to 17. Okay, and it says, from the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. And keep counting until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days later. Everyone say 50. 50 days later. And then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. And from wherever you live, bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. And make these loaves from the four gods of choice flour and bake them with yeast. And they will be an offering to the Lord from the first of your crops. From the first of your crops. Now, the context for this is... And remember, we're talking about Pentecost Sunday, which is the Sunday, the Holy Spirit, the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out. This is what we are celebrating today. But in the biblical times, there were three annual feasts that Jewish men were required to travel to Jerusalem for, that they had to go and make sure that they attend to celebrate. And the first one was the festival of Passover or first fruits. Okay, we know that. That is where they celebrated and they looked back to the Lord, bringing them out of Egypt. Remember in the Old Testament, they had to put the blood on the kusaina uh, doorposts. Thank you very much. Okay, to represent the Lord, bringing them out of slavery. Okay, out of Egypt. So the first one was Passover. The second one was the Feast of Weeks. The uh, Hebrew term is Shavuot. Okay, and that means... The festival of weeks, this is what Leviticus 23 is talking about. 
This was a festival where they celebrated the first fruit or the first harvest of the grain, the wheat harvest. So they celebrated the festival of weeks. That is the second one. And the third one was the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, what is interesting is that the Feast of Weeks, the Lord told them to celebrate 50 weeks after Passover, 50 days after Passover. Now, in the New Testament, the Greek word that is used for this festival is Pentecost. What does the word Pentecost mean? Penta means five, and cost means times ten, multiplied by ten. So the word Pentecost means 50. When was the Holy Spirit poured out on the church for the very first time? 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so there's a slide that the team can put up. Okay, it's already up. Awesome. Okay, and this is a comparison. Just look, and I want you to just think through how incredible the Lord is about His plans, about what He wants to accomplish, about everything that he had planned from the before the beginning of time and how it came into fulfillment through jesus christ so the festival the festival of weeks was shavuot in the greek uh, in the um, hebrew pentecost in the greek in the new testament 50 days after passover 50 days that's actually not after the cross i'm sorry that's a typo it's after the resurrection because remember when jesus was resurrected three days after he died he spent 40 days on earth, and the Bible said he appeared to many people. And it also said that he spoke, in those 40 days, he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And then 10 days after he, last week we celebrated Ascension Day, you understood about that, so 40 days after Jesus was resurrected, he ascended back to heaven. And 10 days after that, he sent the promise of the Holy Spirit. 50 and 50. And what is even more incredible, Passover was when they were led out of Egypt. After the cross was when we were led out of sin. Okay? The spiritual Egypt. The first fruits of the grain, the wheat harvest, was celebrated during the week, uh, festival of harvest. What do we celebrate at Pentecost? The first fruit of the spiritual harvest. The birth of the church. I don't know about you, but that is incredible. Can you see the Lord's hand so miraculously in everything from the Old Testament? And the festival of weeks, this is also interesting, was also when they celebrated when Moses received the tablets of the law on Mount Sinai. And on that day, which was a terrifying day, Johannes spoke about it also, 3,000 people died. What happened at Pentecost? The moment they received the new covenant of the Spirit of Christ, 3,000 people were added to the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, is the Lord amazing? Is the Lord incredible? And so, this was the old covenant of the law, but the new covenant of grace and of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus Christ came on the day of Pentecost. And that is what we're going to talk about today. How the kingdom of God relates back to Pentecost, relates back to the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit, God's Spirit that He deposits in you and I so that we can influence the world with His kingdom. And it's so incredible. I didn't actually see the link. I didn't think about it until I started studying and then we realized, oh, it's Pentecost Sunday. I just think that is incredible. The Lord is amazing. And you know, why is this important for us to look at? Why is it important to, to look, not just read the New Testament and study the New Testament, but to go back to the Old Testament? Because in Colossians, and the scripture is also a new version, it says that the things of the Old Covenant, the things of the Old Testament, were a shadow of the things to come through Jesus Christ. In other words, it was symbolic to show the prophecies about Jesus, Johannes spoke about it last week, the prophecies of Jesus, everything was prophesied in the Old Testament, amen, of the things to come. So nothing was a surprise, everything was planned, and it said that even these festivals were a shadow of what is to come. It had symbolic value, but the substance 
of what was foreshadowed belongs to Jesus Christ. I think that's incredible. And so last week we spoke about this and what does it actually mean for us when we talk about Pentecost? Why do we need to get excited about it? Why do we even still look back at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit only to birth the church? No! There are many people in the body of Christ that believe that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was just to get the church kick-started and then that was that. Then that was that. But you and I are still actually part of that harvest today. Amen? The story is not finished. We're not in the Old Testament where, it, you know, certain stories ended with certain people. We're in the New Testament. We're in the New Covenant of Christ and it is still going. God still wants to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. God wants to infiltrate this world with His kingdom, but He wants you and I to be the vessels. Is anyone with me this morning? So what was celebrated as a renewal of the old covenant and God's provision now became the celebration of the new covenant from the law to the Spirit, from the law to Christ, and the church was birthed. And on that day, we're going to read through some of the passages, but when Peter spoke, when Peter received the Holy Spirit, when they received the promise, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and 3,000 people in one day were added to the church, a boldness came upon him, something was shaken, and the way that they preached was actually a confirmation of Jesus extending that mission of what he did on earth, and he said, okay, I am leaving, by Jesus the Holy Spirit, that you have. Amen? This is not a story in your life. We are part of this. And I know we're not a church that believes that, but I get excited. Okay, so why is this amazing? Why is this significant? Because Pentecost did kickstart the mission. The disciples went in that moment, Holy Spirit fell, they went from spectators, in other words, Ah, oh, it's so cool to watch Jesus do the ministry and watching him heal the sick and, you know, watching him establishing the kingdom and driving out demons and raising people from the dead. But they went to partakers of the kingdom. That is the significance of Holy Spirit being poured out. That now, when I receive that same spirit that raises, that raised Jesus from the dead, I can also participate in the work of the kingdom. I don't just have to watch someone else do it. I don't just have to read about Jesus doing it. Jesus said, you will even do greater works than I did. Amen? How is that possible? It's possible because of Pentecost. It's possible because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I was so reminded of this when I saw the reports of the team and they were walking from village to village and it was like the gospel's coming alive to me again. This is what I dreamt about when I started reading the Bible and I, and I asked, Lord, can I, can I just be in an environment where I see that? You know, I used to watch programs <laughs> when I just became a believer. There was a show on TV called, do you remember what it was called? Oh, it was good. It'll, the Lord will remind me in a moment. But it was a show about American missionaries. And they would go, Global Ventures. Who's ever seen Global Ventures? Okay, two of us. Did it change your life? You would watch these missionaries. They would always have someone with the camera. And they would go into some of the remote, you know, most remote parts of the world. They would go into villages. They would go into different places. From Peru to different villages in Africa. My, some of the darkest places in the world. And they would only go with the word from the Lord and with the power of the Holy Spirit. And they would go and look to seek the kingdom and to establish the kingdom wherever they go. And I saw these people laying hands on people and seeing healing come. I saw them pray for people and people would start to manifest if they were bound by demonic forces and I would see spirits go. And I thought to myself, why am I watching a TV show about this? Why am I reading about it in the Bible? Why am I not seeing this in my church? Why am I not seeing this where I go? If the same power lives inside of me, 
There was just a disconnect for me and it bothered me. Has anyone ever felt like that? Ek wil nie lees nie man, I want to be involved in it. I want to be in it, I want to see it. I, Jesus, I want to see people encounter Jesus the same way that I've encountered him. But I don't want to pray for 50 years to see one thing happen. Is it not ek? Okay, I've got some, some witnesses here this morning. And I prayed and I said, Lord, you know, and this was a few years before I got to live in a world. <laughs> and the first time I went on a live in a world outreach, I was rocked to the core. Because we were taught that the kingdom of God lives inside of me. The kingdom of God is both now and then. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God. Amen? And so the same way that God rules and reigns in heaven, He wants to rule and reign on earth. But He needs us as vessels. He wants us as vessels to do that through. He chose to have us participate in the work of the kingdom with Him. Otherwise, we could have just been puppets and the Lord does everything and we just, I don't know, we're just here. Like, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what the purpose of that would be. This is the way that God chose to do things. And we went on this outreach and I was so nervous because we did pre-training for the outreach. And um, Jason was like, okay, now we are going to talk about how do we pray for someone who maybe manifests uh, a presence that is not from the Lord. And I thought, I know I've watched this on TV, but now it's getting a little bit too real and I'm not sure about it anymore. And so I was very, very nervous and I was a little bit afraid to be honest. Because who knows that sometimes when we go into a place of the unknown, even if we've heard about it many times, the unknown can be scary. And I remember, okay, I studied, I made notes, I practiced, we practiced, we practiced on one another and, you know, all these things and we, we get to this outreach and we go from village to village. Now, uh, praise the Lord, we were not going into a village alone. We always had, you know, people in a group, which I checked uh, 10 times before. Am I going to be alone or is someone going to be with me? Because I don't, I don't want anything to happen. And so we get to this first village. And at this moment, I was working for a well-known uh, ministry and of a, a well-known lady. And we get to this first village and it's my turn to pray. And I introduce myself and this lady introduces herself and she says, her name is Joyce. And I thought, okay, that's funny. And we start to just pray for her. And, you know, she, she was open to the gospel. We were preaching the gospel and she was open to receive. And, um, and then the moment I laid hands on her and I started to pray, <laughs> something started to happen to this lady and all of a sudden in that moment I could not remember a single word we were taught I could not remember one scripture I could not remember what to do what to pray and I remember turning around to my friend I think Johannes was on camera he was filming everything and I turned to my friend Carmen and I said to her what do you know here? <laughs> And in that moment, it was just so big, but I think it was because I was witnessing the kingdom of God being expanded right in front of me. And that moment was so huge. It was something I prayed for for so long to experience. And the moment I saw something like that happen, I froze and I just couldn't remember. And, and she started praying and then it was all beautiful. And this lady actually had a lot of unforgiveness and as we were able to lead her to, to forgive the person that really hurt her, miraculous healing came over her body. And what she came for prayer for, she received. And I'll never forget it because it was such a powerful moment for me personally where the Lord showed me that I am real. And what I want to do and how I want to use you for has nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with my spirit. It has everything to do with the King of Kings, with Jesus Christ. And it was a powerful moment for me. Amen. You can turn your Bibles to Acts. Alright, so we are talking about Pentecost and Jesus transferred the mission of the expansion of the kingdom to you and I. And so let's read about what happened at Pentecost. Are you guys good? 
So Acts 2 verse 2 says this, And suddenly a sound from heaven, like a rushing, violent wind. A sound came from heaven, like a rushing, violent wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. I forgot to just give a little bit of context. Remember what is happening now. So Jesus ascended to heaven 40 days after his resurrection. And he said to the disciples, Go and wait. Do not start any ministry. Don't start praying for people. Don't start doing the things that I showed you for three years. Wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so what they did, this was now the, the festival of Feast of Weeks of Pentecost. So people from every single nation in the world at that time came together to celebrate this Feast of Pentecost. And the disciples and everyone, I think there was about 120 people, they went to the upper room and they were praying. They were praying and they were waiting. They were waiting and they were praying. Because Jesus said, don't do anything until you receive the gift. And I, I don't even think that they knew what they were waiting for. But they waited. And so this is where, where Acts 2 starts off. And suddenly that sound came. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And verse 3. Did I give verse 3? Perfect. And there appeared to be to them tongues resembling fire which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And so there was this powerful moment where they were waiting, they were praying in unity, in one accord. And that unity is very, very powerful. That's why we speak about unity so much. Because where there is unity, the Lord commands a blessing. And the Holy Spirit powerfully descended on all of them. And then they started to speak in different languages and in different tongues. And then all the other people that came for the festival, a lot of Jewish people, came and they thought that these people were drunk. And then Peter, my favorite of all the disciples, he stands up. He's a little bit crazy before he received the Spirit. Now he received the Spirit. Now he's next level crazy. And he stands up and boldly, the Bible says, he started preaching to all of these people, to these crowds. And he said, guys, we're not drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We receive the Spirit. And he starts delivering this incredible sermon. And you can read the rest of Acts 2, where Peter preaches. And he tells them, he takes, because they are Jewish, he takes them back to their Jewish history. He takes them back to the history of the Lord and how the Lord had led them out of Egypt and this whole journey of what the Lord did. And he brings them up to this present moment of Jesus leaving and saying, I release this mission now to you. Here is my promised Holy Spirit. And go. Die licht is groen. And go. And it's this powerful moment. And the mission was extended. And so Peter also recounts the story of the prophet, or the words of the prophet Joel, and he says this, it's not on the screen. Just further down in verse 17, if you're following along, it says, the prophet Joel prophesied this also in the Old Testament, and he said, in the last days, who knows we're in the last days still. We're still in the last days. It's the last days until Jesus comes. God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And in those days, that's these days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And so he starts to speak, and right after he says that, the Bible says, and the people who were there, the word, the sermon, pierced their hearts. It pierced their hearts. Another translation says it crushed them with grief because they realized that they, the Messiah they were waiting for was the one that they crucified. And they said to Peter and the disciples, we repent, what must we do? No, they first said, what must we do? Because they were heartbroken with grief. They didn't realize. But why, why was Peter's words piercing their hearts? Because of the power of the Spirit. 
because of the oil of the anointing that was on that man when he brought the words. You know, when, you, when, when the word of God is being preached and it pierces right through you, it's the anointing. It's the Holy Spirit saying, I need you to understand. And Peter and the apostle said to them, you need to repent. You need to get baptized. And you need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so then you have people in the body of Christ saying, oh, but it was just for the people there. No, no, no. If you read one sentence further, Peter says, and this gift of the Holy Spirit is for you. It's for your children. It's for your children's children. This is for you. After, 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 kleinkinders wat kom in 2022 na Rosewood Academy. The Spirit is the gift for all of us. It's the gift from the Father. And Jesus is the one that baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And so we say that in those, hallelujah, in those days, the 40 days that Jesus was on earth, before his, after his resurrection and before he went to the Father, he spoke about one subject and one subject only. The kingdom of God. That's actually the point that I want to get to, but I took a long way to get there. I want us to go to Matthew 13. And this is our last scripture that we're going to camp here this morning before we are going to pray. Matthew 13, verse 31 to 33. And this parable is uh, repeated actually also in Mark and in Luke. I think Mark and Luke. But we are going to read this one in Matthew 13. And so Jesus is teaching them about the kingdom. And you know that Jesus taught in parables, right? He taught in parables. What are parables? It's earthly illustrations, things that they can understand of that time to explain a spiritual reality, to explain a spiritual principle or truth. And so he's telling them what the kingdom of God is like. And here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. Verse 32. And it is the smallest of all seeds. But it becomes the largest of garden plants and it grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. And then he continued this and Jesus also used this illustration. He said the kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Have we got any bakers in the room? Fantastic. I'm not putting my hand up. It's just for illustration. <laughs> Okay, so you know the power of yeast. And even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. And then he stops. So when you go and study this passage, many scholars say you need to keep this passage as a unit. Because in some of the other illustrations in Matthew 13, that whole chapter, Jesus is teaching about the kingdom. But in many of those illustrations, he's warning them about the Pharisees and the religious leaders and the things that could stop the expansion of the kingdom. But in this unit, he's talking about the power of the kingdom. The power of the kingdom, of how it starts so small, so seemingly insignificant, so tiny, yet give it time and it will expand and it will multiply and it will grow into something so powerful, so ridiculous. And if you go and study this further, it has so much significance and we don't have time to go into it in that level of depth, but I wanted to focus on this whole idea of the yeast, the yeast that infiltrates. Because it's important to understand, for us to understand the kingdom dynamics, if we want to establish the kingdom on earth, if we want to see the kingdom manifest around us, if we want to experience the fullness of the kingdom on a daily basis, we need to understand how the Lord is explaining his kingdom. Amen? So the first one, the mustard seed, it was a seed that was unusually small. It was unusually tiny. And I've googled mustard trees, and it seems like those things can go up to three meters or even higher. So there was something of a real power of a small seed like that, that goes into the ground 
And who knows what needs to happen with a seed when it gets planted? It has to die. And then it germinates. And then it starts to grow. And then it takes time before you see it on the surface level of the soil. Amen? So it starts to grow, but it has to die first. So there's a whole other sermon of dying first before we see the new life being resurrected. Okay, and it speaks about never despise the day of small beginnings. I felt like this was a word for someone this morning. Whatever you are involved in feels like a very, very small beginning to you at the moment. And it's very tempting in those times where things feel so small and insignificant to give up because you're thinking, but it should have been bigger. It should have been wider. It should have been more. But the Lord says, no, I am starting the same way I start my kingdom in seed form. But it has to die first and then it has to grow. And it grows and it grows. And a lot of things happen underground where you cannot see it. Amen. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. Jesus started his kingdom mission with 12 people. And here we are 2,000 years later, still growing, still expanding, still infiltrating and permeating. But the Afrikaans word infiltrate, elke deel van die samenleving. 12 people. That encourages me in a new church plot. God doesn't need the numbers. He just needs one person saying, yes, Lord, use me. God doesn't care about numbers. Parable 2, the yeast. Now, I googled yeast because I don't know lots about baking. I do know that it's a rising agent, so I do know and I've seen the Ian Kenneth Kabrui can prepare bucket. Without the yeast, it will not rise. So I've noticed that. But here's an interesting thing. We know that yeast is a tiny, living, single-cell organism. If you go and Google this, the scientific things, now I don't know much about that, but what was interesting, I said, Johannes, did you know that the yeast cell, or no, the human cell, a, a cell in our body, takes 12 hours to duplicate, to multiply? She knew it. Did you study it recently? Am I correct? Okay, I can not do it also. That the is what I create. Okay, so 12 hours for a human cell to multiply. Guess how long it takes for a yeast cell to multiply? Two hours. Okay, I only thought that was incredible because this just shows you the speed and it encourages me to go into baking. Okay? But so what is the purpose of, of yeast? It is to produce the gas that makes the bread rise. The yeast feeds on the sugar and the flour and then it releases carbon dioxide which is the thing that makes the bubbles in the bread and makes it all fluffy. Who loves bread? Oh, it's and, and it expands and it grows. And the thing is, when you, when you have dough, I do remember this from my childhood. It, on the farm, we used to uh, bake lots of roosterkoek. Begin roosterkoek. Now, if you know roosterkoek, you know roosterkoek, you must need a lot. I call boy elbow grease, I boy knieglijk. But you do that before you put the yeast in. And it's interesting to me that the same way that the yeast first has to go into dough that has to be kneaded a lot, it's the same with our hearts. It's the same when we are trusting the Lord to see the kingdom of God. Hearts need to be plowed. Hearts need to be kneaded. Our hearts need to get to that place where the dough is so that when the yeast of the kingdom comes, it can actually find a place to start multiplying and to start growing. So if your heart is in that place and it's ready for the kingdom and it's ready to receive it, it can start to multiply. So the bottom line is this, what does the Lord need? He just needs doughy hearts. That's all that he needs. Sometimes we think, oh, we need to be, we need to have this burning bush and we need to have this. No, you just need to have a heart to receive the kingdom. Then you can go and multiply and extend the kingdom in the earth. Because God wants us to be the yeast in the world. God wants us to go and release the kingdom everywhere we go.
Not just pray about it here in the corner and hope it will happen. No, no, no. We need to be active partakers, active participants in the work of the kingdom on a daily basis. Does that mean I need to go to the Bundu every day? No. Outreach is in our homes. Outreach for the kingdom is in my workplace. It's in my school. It's at Checkers. It's at Woolies. It's at Woerman. Okay? It's in Swakopmund. It's everywhere that we go. God wants His kingdom established. And so Jesus is using the example of the character of yeast to explain the character of the kingdom. The yeast is the living agent that brings life to the dark. Amen. Does that make sense this morning? I think it's so powerful. What's the process of, of leavening? Leavening is what they used in the Old Testament to explain the, the yeast. Leavening, once that process begins, it's impossible to stop. Do you know that God's kingdom is advancing right now as we speak? God's kingdom is advancing everywhere over the world right now. Right now. It's happening right now. It's happening inside of you. It's happening outside of you. The kingdom is both now and it is not yet. And I believe God is calling us to be the yeast that infiltrates the world. Once the yeast is in our hearts, it must permeate every part of our world like the yeast infiltrates every part of that dough. And you know what, church, to be honest, we owe the world the kingdom. We owe the world an encounter with the king. And honestly, my prayer before the Lord is, Lord, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that I live with this mindset every single day. I've been going about my business and not actually be open to have the Holy Spirit speak to me in the queue at Checkers. Or not be too busy with the things of the ministry to hear the Lord. If He wants to speak a word to someone, if He wants to release and He wants me to pray over someone. And He wants me to lead someone into an encounter with the Lord. We can be so busy with the things of this world that we lose touch with the kingdom. And the Lord just says, I just want to pull you closer because I'm setting, I'm setting up appointments for you everywhere that you go. Because you are my vessel. You and I are the vessels that He is choosing to release the kingdom through. And so even though I wasn't on the outreach, I feel like this has fueled me again afresh. That is what the Lord is calling us to. You can ask any one of the team that went on. I, they look different to me. Rano, you like my honors. I can see that he's experienced the kingdom. He has seen something new and it's made him hungry for more. And I pray, that is our heart's prayer, that we would be hungry as people. You know, I can't preach us hungry. I can give it a good go, but you know what? It's all of our own hearts that decide, Lord, I want more. Less of me, that's my prayer, Lord, less of me, more of you. Because if there's less of me, there can be more of him, there can be more power released into this world for a world that is dark and they need the light and they need the king and they need an encounter with the kingdom of God. And you know that it is much easier than we think it is. Why? Because the power comes from him. All we need to be is willing. Hallelujah. All we need is to be willing. Is anyone hungry this morning? Is anyone hungry, not just for yourself to encounter more, but for you to be equipped to take that gift that you've received to other people who so desperately need it? I don't know about you, but I've got a fresh hunger, and I wasn't even on this outreach. I've got a fresh hunger. I just hear us a belief. Take us deeper. Take us further. Take us where we haven't been before. And I feel like this morning, as I was praying, I literally saw in my heart, in my mind, wherever you want to call it, I saw like a river, a river of oil. And I said, okay, Lord, but what does that mean? And I, and I feel a strong sense this morning, God is going to call us to take a step of faith into the river of His Spirit. 
It's going to take a step of faith. It's going to take something where I'm saying, Lord, I don't want the usual that I've always received. I don't want to go out of this church service, enjoy the good coffee, and yeah, it was a nice morning. I want to be different when I walk out of here this morning because I want my week to look different. And I want to walk. The Bible says the kingdom is not just a matter of talking. It's a matter of power in Jesus' name. I want to see his power where I move. I want to see the king encounter people. Amen? And so, how easy is it? How easy is it? If Marizan is here this morning, I'm sorry I'm picking on you, but when I prayed last night, I really felt like God wanted to encounter this morning. And I'm not going to cry. But Marizuan, I feel so for you. Say those and even them with Anya can do. And it's also her birthday tomorrow, so make sure you message her. <laughs> but I feel like the Lord says there is something new that He wants to release in you this morning. And I'm blaming it your to mark. And when we release the kingdom over someone, all that we do is we just pray. JC once shared this incredible testimony, and we've seen it, and I've applied it to my own life. You know that Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So sometimes when I don't even know to pray, I just release the kingdom. And so I'm just going to pray, Lord, I thank you for your daughter. I thank you for Marizon. And Lord, right now, I just ask for your kingdom to come over Marizon. Thank you for your daughter. I just pray for the fullness of the kingdom. The fullness of your spirit to just be released over your daughter right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just your kingdom over her thoughts, over her body, over every cell in her body, over her heart. And I just pray for the peace and the joy of your kingdom to be released over her right now. In Jesus' name. Did you experience anything about the Lord when we pray? But do you see how easy it is? Do you see how easy it is? All that the Lord wants us to do is to just take your hand and just lay it on someone. Just lay it on someone. Okay. That's all it is, and that's what we're going to trust the Lord for this morning. He just wants to pour out His Spirit. Because you know what the Lord's heart is? The Lord's heart is to touch every one of His children. The Lord's heart, the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. My beard and beard is a big Okay. That's all that the Lord wants us to do. And as you know, we're talking about the very own Father. There is a power. There is healing that He wants to release on hearts that are broken. Physical healing He wants to release in bodies that need healing. He's the King and He loves us. Amen. Why don't you stand this morning? Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to ask the team to play a song for us, and I want us to just take a few moments and. And go somewhere you haven't gone before this morning. Trust the Lord. Team, you can start playing this song. Trust the Lord to do something afresh in you, to ignite something. Maybe you feel dry this morning. Ask the Lord, Lord, come and wake my appetite for your kingdom again. Come and release your fire over me this morning. And then we're going to pray for some people. Amen.